Oh, hold on. Civil War. Let's go. Joyo versus Rise. This is Pog. This is exciting stuff. Now, I told you guys that I expected uh, Rise to be pretty solid in ones. But Joyo, I've never seen play ones. He said he's 1300 in ones. Let's see how this goes. But we have seen... Uh, Joyo, will f he'll fall under the category of like when... You know, players like Garrett, Chicago... Who else? Who else is like just a pure threes main who dips their toes in ones? And it has very, very mixed results. Garrett, of course, got styled on by AJ. I can't think of any other like just really well-known threes players who have just come into ones and see just to see what happens. Like Chicago beat Drees, which is really, really funny. So th this could be like that. This could be, you know, Rise isn't as known for his one his 1v1 as Drees was back then but the impressive the uh, showing that Ryze just had against Oski has kind of got him on that Drees kind of level where he's the he's the teammate that actually has one's experience versus Joyo who's a uh, well he said right now that he's 1300 ones brand new to this game mode Ryze is just 50 50 again oh no <laughs> GG's <laughs> Joyo already realizing that you can't just throw yourself at the ball at once. <laughs> Two 50-50s go wrong. Oh, look at this. Inverted... <laughs> Inverted half flip on the kickoff. Attempting a mind game. Joyo being very cheeky here, but Rice saw it. He saw it coming, and then Joyo whiffs. Okay, no oh dear. Go focus his Rice. <laughs> the Team Queso boys already at each other's throats. And this is looking more like... Oh! Hold on, I was going to say looking more like the time Garrett played AJ than the time Chicago played Drees, but Joyo, the net's wide open, mate. You got <laughs> Oh no! Joyo, you've got to find the net. There's no teammate. You've got to stay in the net there. You can't just go for the boost. You oh my goodness. <laughs> Rise has no mercy, man. He has no mercy. He typed that. Rise typed faking. Either he doesn't have faking quick chat bound or he just wanted to let Joyo know that he typed it because he misspelled it. Faking her. Alright, what's Joyo got? Okay, right. Okay, he's got the offense. We know that Joyo's got the offense. If, if Joyo just air dribbles every attack, he's got a chance. He says, I Khaled. <laughs> Joyo just needs to find a way to get possession. And it's going to be tough because uh, Rise knows what to do on kickoffs. He knows how to switch up kickoffs. Oh, here we go, though. Joyo looking for the placement and the boost grab. And now he's going to give the ball away. Okay, interesting strategy. Oh no, he's going to stay on it! He's not done! It was, it was all a big plan. I thought he was just giving the ball away, but he's staying on the ball. I was, uh... I wasn't ready for the Joyo level up there. I thought he was just going to hit the ball away and go for boost. Ceiling challenge. Makes contact. He's looking better and better for Joyo now. He's not in a terrible position. I mean, the first three goals, pretty bad. Pretty embarrassing. But look at him go. He's... Actually in a decent spot, just over a minute into the game, only down by two. And he doesn't go for the big boost now. Does get bumped for his trouble though. Rise continuing to show no mercy to his teammate here. Joy is already making some smarter plays. He didn't go for the big boost there, leave his net open, but there's more to do than just manage your boost in once. You need to cover the net, you need to pressure the ball. Oh, Rise is being so cheeky. This is, uh, this is so harsh. <laughs> This is a baptism of fire. Rise is like hitting him with every trick in the book in the first two minutes of the game. Per Joyo, man. How is he supposed to pick up on all these tricks? Okay, he's done the, he's done the half flip again. Rise shoots again. This time Joyo will save it. I think that kickoff is viable, by the way. You know, Joyo beamed it on the first time. Uh, and he kind of beamed it this time as well. But I think it's a viable kickoff. Now, if, if he's going to make it viable, he needs to get a better clear after uh, Rise shoots. He just needs to get a better clear. I don't think it's a kickoff that's viable if you do it every time, though. Like, there is a hard counter, which is just possession play. Like, if Rise just doesn't hit the ball at Joyo, Joyo's facing backwards. So Rise could just literally dribble the ball to 100 boosts and then he'd have possession. So it's, it's a losing position for sure. You always, you'd rather have possession than have 100 boosts and not have possession. Um, but it's definitely viable to mix in there. Definitely, okay, so it's getting pretty bad. I just realized it's 7-1. Oh my goodness. All right, Joyo's got to get into the, he's got to get into a possession play. He's not going for the kickoff. He's, he wants to make this work. He wants to figure out a way 
to <laughs> make this kickoff work. Because <laughs> honestly, he's got some aspects of the game that looks pretty good. Aerial challenge game is probably going to be quite strong for Jayo. And the aerial offense obviously very good. Look at the passing plays. You know, they're against each other right now, but they are still excellent teammates. Rise with a tight angle double tap. And he had to put that one in at an angle because if he shoots it straight down, it's going to hit the bar. But by going across the goal like this, he gives himself a bit more leeway. And he is absolutely smashing Jayo, who says go next. And I think, yeah, we are going to get a forfeit here. Is that an FF? I just have to confirm. Yes. You can. You can do that. Go next. Okay. So he's going next. So we're going to reset the score. Reset the time. And Rise is winning 1-0. Joyo has forfeited game one. He considers this an unwinnable position. Let me just make sure that everybody's ready here. I think they are. And into game two we go. Just like that. <laughs> Don't you guys love admin mode? So much faster than going back to the menu and getting stuck in the loading screen. Okay, Joyo with the go next mentality. Clearly the right decision. As he explodes to a 1-0 lead. He's not sure how he got this boost. I think it was probably the elevation, if anything. I've seen that happen quite a lot. Um, in games that I've played, but also in 1v1s that I've casted, where it looks like the player who's lowered down to the ground is closer to the boost. But I think it might have something to do with the elevation. Rocket Science, we need your help. Halfway dead. I'm not smart enough to figure that out. Are you going to get boost more than somebody who's... Uh, or are you going to get to the boost more quickly if you're slightly higher up? That is the question. Now, Joya looking for a 50-50 here. Not able to get one. Rise, not giving it to him. Just pops the ball up in the air. Joya trying to air dribble this into a 50 on the landing. He just uh, didn't get the last touch on the ball. By the way, I've been very distracted with how funny this game was, but I want to say thank you to Elite Proham, the 7 month tier 1, and Breco with the 51 month tier 1. I really appreciate you guys. Welcome back to the channel. This is ambitious from Joyo, but we've seen him score goals just like this. If someone can do it, it's probably this guy. Her unique mechanics. Didn't Joyo get nominated for that, that, uh, Winter Split, Rocket League Award, the Free Spirit Award, the player with the most unique playstyle. I think Joyo was recommended, or recommended, I think he was nominated for that, wasn't he? Joyo and Yan, uh, maybe Atomic. He's definitely got a unique playstyle. He barrels right through Rise with the flip reset and the dunk. Great continuation. He says, car design glitch making me slow. So he's not liking the car design right now. I don't know, it looks like a pretty speedy car. Joyo's always got the good car design. Joyo and Rise. I think they were both nominated for the Fashionista Award, whatever it was called. For uh, iconic car designs. I think Mark by 8 was as well. Joyo just needs to freestyle and he'll win. I don't know if it's as simple as that, man. I don't know if it's as simple as that. If I was to break down the differences that we've seen in the first seven minutes here uh, between these two players, not even seven because it was an early forfeit, it's more like five minutes. So Rai's kickoff game is definitely a level above or two. His 50-50 game, definitely a level above. His boost management, nice goal history. <laughs> He's not too happy about that one. His boost management, and that's everything regarding like boost pathing. Um, and playing the ball into positions where you can grab boost and put Joyo on low boost, like Rise is definitely levels above in that as well. <laughs> Joyo's accusing Rise of wetting the bed in LA. We're seeing some real drama, some very serious accusations coming out right now. And yeah, no, where where Joyo's got an excellent uh, aerial game, I think Rise aerial defense is pretty good as well. In fact, it's very good. So it's gonna be tough to really flex that when. You know, Rise has, I think, got Joyo's number in so many different aspects of the game. And Joyo, yeah, he'll be the better aerial offense player, I think. But, okay, can he read this? No, he can't. Tough read, to be fair. 
Yeah, the mind games and the physical games also looked extremely difficult for Joyo to match Rise in. He's now going for a top corner double. In fact, that bump might help him. Joyo's accidentally bumped Rise into a better position. He was trying to make a save off the inside of his post here, but that bump actually put Rise on the right side of the ball. Not sure if it would have mattered. <laughs> I was wondering if that... Okay, the, the, for those of you who are watching on mobile and can't read this, Joyo accuses Rise of wetting the bed. Rise responds, why leak? And immediately I'm thinking, that doesn't seem like the reply of somebody who just accused you of wetting the bed. I feel like you might be setting them up for a follow-up there. <laughs> Joyo, quick-witted in his response, calls out the exact uh, thing that we're all thinking. Ooh! Joyo there looking to pop the ball after his landing. Still within a comeback distance here. I'll tell you what, that wasn't conventional, but it worked out quite well for him. Joyo keeping Rise back for the time being, but Rise predicts a pre-jump, <laughs> ships it directly into the net. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Rise just knows Joyo all too well. He knows he's going to breach up here and he just chips the ball into the goal. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Is TRK the best Middle East player? Uh, I ranked him the highest going into the Winter Major, which uh, of course Sandrock now Falcons couldn't play unfortunately, but yeah, I think based on his Fell Major performance and the fact that Khaled, TRK and Ahmed are all very much equals online, um, you have to say TRK number one he was the best player at the Fall Major. A lot of players, a lot of people, um, you know, content creators, analysts, uh, you know, fans of RL Esports say that Ahmad was the best player in the, the Fall Major because he did have the top three clips of the weekend, two ridiculous goals and um, an insane save. But if you look between all the clips and you, you look at especially the NRG series, you'll see that TRK, I think, had the most impactful tournament. You, you can't just look at the big clips and call whoever scored the most insane goals the MVP. You need to look uh, at the fundamentals as well. Part of the reason why I think Vatira's tournament was underrated in um, the LA Major, because everybody thought Vatira, myself included, I thought Vatira was going to come out and clip on everyone, but he actually played a much more defensive role and uh, unleashed Joy on Rise up front. He still played unbelievably well, in my opinion. I think just because he didn't do all the flashy stuff that he's been doing online. He still actually scored a, a double reset and some other crazy goals, but just because he didn't do it as much, I think his tournament was underrated. Who wins out of first killer and Jory is in a 1v1? It depends on the setting. I think if it's... Um ah, it's, it's tough. It depends how much is on the line. If it's just like a, a random show match, I think first killer... But if it's a tournament, I have to say Joria's. I mean, Joria's tournament record is just too good. Obviously, First Killer's tournament record is pretty good as well. Um, he's undefeated in North America for tournaments. But every time that Europe and NA have matched up in 1v1, historically, EU's come out on top. So if you're looking at the best NA tournament player versus the best EU tournament player, I just have to lean towards the EU tournament player. And no, it's not. Like, before everybody says bias, it's not bias, it's just history and statistics. Like, EU has usually just come out on top. Salt Mine won. Um, and we had First Killer versus uh, three EU players in the four. Uh, you know, it's close, it's close. It would be, it would be probably, uh, I'd say, Game 7. Game 7, Jory is. It would be sick, though. I'd wish we could see that. We, yeah, we saw the Dignitas guys against uh, AJ, Daniel, and uh, Rettles recently as well. Dignitas beat one all three. Yeah, I think you just have to give Jory as the edge there. Very, very close though. It'd be super sick to see matches like that. It'd be super sick to see Khaled match up with all those guys. You've also got to think of um, you know, Appjack in those, in those games. Zapjack has, has beaten Daniel in a tournament. He beat uh, AJ, I think, twice in big show matches now. One on his own channel, one on mine. It's very close, though. It's very, very close. And not just CU and NA. I think, like, 1v1 is super interesting because you've got four extremely competitive regions. Like, uh, KV1 is right up there with the best in the world. And I think Yan and Wissy are right 
right behind him. And then you've got obviously Middle East. So many monsters in uh, in one v one as well. There's there's just so many. Look at the stats: twenty two shots. <laughs> Incredible performance. Says Rise. Sixteen goals. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody wondering what's going on with the scoreboard here, it's because Joyo forfeited halfway through game one, so I just reset the score back to zero, and it added both of the scores together on the final stats page. That is why it's important uh, to always get a clean restart if you want the stats to make sense. You know what? I just saved this replay. That replay is going to have the, the entire thing in it. It's going to have the first game then me resetting the score, and then the second game, all in one replay. Which is pretty funny. You send that one over to my editor. You only, you know, I only send them over so you can get a thumbnail from it. He's gonna think like, what is this? Why Why is it so long? Great pre-jump saved there by Joyo. He's still fighting for his first game win here against his teammate, who has shown absolutely no mercy. He's given Joyo no time to learn the ropes. He's throwing him straight in at the deep end and then uh, chucked in a couple of sharks as well. well. Let's see how Ryze decides to close this out because I really think he can close this out in three if he wants to. But will he just try and put Joyo in uncomfortable positions or is he going to try and take him on in a freestyle 1v1? It's developing a little bit of that right now based on the dribbling play we just saw from Ryze and the two offensive plays we've seen from Joyo. Looks like he didn't actually have a reset there. It worked in his favor. Rise, fully expecting one. Oh, that's probably not the boost grab that you want to be making, but looks like it's going to work out because Rise didn't go for the immediate shot. It just takes a bit longer to go for the mid boost. If anyone's wondering why is that not the boost that players tend to go for, it's just a bit further away from the play. And when you do that, when you go for a mid boost um, on the far side, well. The opponents on the other side of the pitch or in your back corner. You're just going to take a little bit longer to get back, and that gives the opponent more time to get close to your net and really threaten a shot that you have to pre jump or um, struggle to react to. And uh, it just gives your opponent a bit more, a few more options as well. One of the main things that you'll notice all the top players doing after the vast majority of their kickoffs in 1v1s is close the gap. Even if you're going to have no boost against 100 boosts, still. Close the gap, get get as close as possible, limit the options that the opponent will have. Look at Joyo with the boost steal. Perfect timing on that one. And he's actually got Rise in a difficult position here. And another aerial play coming in. But Rise pre-jump is way off. Joyo gets past him with a significant margin as well. So where Rise is coming from. Knows all he has to do is get the ball to the left of him. And the net will be wide open. Do I think the younger pros being out of school for summer to grind for Worlds will be impactful? Um, I don't know. It's really, really tough to say. I don't think Rocket League is a game where you have to, you know, put 10 hours a day into. Rocket League, for me, is more of like an effective practice kind of game. Um, I think a lot of, a lot of players, a lot of pros in Rocket League waste a lot of time when they're practicing by practicing things that aren't really that useful. Um, but interestingly enough, great read there by Joyo. He's, he's stepping up in this game. Big advantage. Has yet to concede in game three. This is a massive turnaround here. Um, uh, I was going to mention, so Team Queso, the two players that we're currently watching, of course, play for Team Queso alongside the Tira. As far as I know, they've never done any replay analysis, and they've never done um, any you know, meetings to discuss tactics. I think all they do is play Rocket League, from what, I've, uh, from what I've heard. They just play a ton, a ton of Rocket League. And I think Joyo had the highest hours going into the LA Major out of anybody. And Ryze and Matera were right up there as well. So they just play a ton of free play. I think uh, Joyo said in an interview that to warm up for scrims, look at him go. He's, I mean, he's in free play right now. I was going to say, to warm up for scrims, he does a couple of hours of free play. This is what this guy does. He does a couple of hours of free play, then they'll scrim for two or three hours, and then he'll just, you know, go play ranked or something. You know, he, he just plays a ton of Rocket League. I mean, you're putting, like, that much time into different types of effective practice. You know, playing ranked twos, you can grind it on the ball mechanics. You can just be greedy. Like, the good thing about ranked twos is you can just be greedy 
air dribble every single play, really grind the offensive mechanics, and then you can practice your challenge game as well, because you do more challenges in 2v2 than you do in 3s. Uh, that, that is a really efficient way to practice, um, more so than rank 3v3, where really you just end up being a babysitter um, in rank 3s for your two dumb teammates. Oh, hey, Jack, how's it going, man? Ryze was saying that you ducked his 1v1 challenge earlier, but... <laughs> I hope the stream went well. Did you raid? Why did it, Why does my stream never tell me when people raid? It just doesn't do it. Or has it not happened yet? Have a, have a good night, man. Take it this as you off to bed. Sleep well, Jack. Choyo's trying to take a game off Ryze here. For anyone who's just coming through. Oh, it's a Twitch bug. I actually had that on uh, one of my raids the other day. Tried to raid someone and it didn't really work. All my, so half my viewers just got stuck in my channel. Stuck in limbo. All good though, all good. So Ryze definitely destroyed Joyo in the first game that these two played. Game two was closer, but still comfortable for Ryze. But this third game is actually going to go to Joyo unless he beans it. Did he try and post pitch that out? I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. Well, let's see if Joyo can actually close this one out. He's played a really, really solid game here. Kickoffs have been much more on point than they were in the previous games. His boost management's been very, very on point as well. You know, it's, it's crazy how much better he looks in this third game than in the first game where he was just driving into positions that would immediately concede. Like, he'll just go into the corner and be like, whoops, my net's, my net's wide open. Already, he's making these improvements. You know, I was talking there about rank 2v2 being a good way to practice your greedy plays and your challenge game and just your activity, your all-around activity in Rocket League. And then, you know, scrimming in the actual tournaments are the best practice for strategy, learning how to play as a team. I don't think Rank 3s really teaches you much about playing better with your team, your 3v3 team, so that's why most pros go for Rank 2s over Rank 3s. Rank 3s, I think for pros, is more of a chill-out thing more of a, okay, let's just play with the mates and have some fun kind of vibe. And yeah, free play. You know, it's it's interesting to me as well. I've noticed that a lot of the players who are really, really good mechanically and who are really, really, you know, uh, you know pop off with the, the flair, a lot of them just sit in free play a lot. Think about it. Justin, Joyo, these guys are known for just sitting in free play for hours. And that could be the, I think, the solution. If you don't like playing 1v1, but you still want to get really, really, really good at Rocket League, I think you just got to free play a lot. <laughs> yeah, it seems to work for Joyo. It seems to, it definitely works for Justin. Look at this. Delay on the flick makes it completely unreadable. <laughs> He like semi flip cancelled there. He held the flip. He, he flip cancelled as soon as he dodged, but then he let go of it. So at the end of the flip just <laughs> went straight through the ball. That was with hardly any boost as well. Joyo is showing up big here. And now it's his turn to make Rise look silly. He's getting revenge for earlier on in the series. Absolutely disgusting. And if you give this guy time on the ball, he's going to do things no one else can do. It is as simple as that. CJ, did I, did I say you say that you want to team with Joyo and Justin? Are you the free play gang? Never 1v1, only free play? Wait until we have somebody who does both. Somebody who plays a ton of ones and a ton of free play as well. It's going to be the indestructible player. I guess that's what makes Jory is so crazy, because he plays 1v1 like it's... Uh, like it's free play. Oh, I was mentioning mechanical freaks. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. CJ, CJ just slides right into that list. Yeah, a lot of the really, really insanely mechanical players come from a ones background, but not all of them do. There's some mechanical monsters who don't come from a ones background. Um, but I bet you they play a metric ton of free play. Where's the CJ clips? Just literally watch any of his streams. He just farms clips. Joyo with a lovely demo dodge there. Gonna have to actually pay close attention. I, you know, after games one and two, I thought, okay, we're gonna see some clips from both players and probably Rise winning 3-0, but full credit to Joyo. He's stepped up massively. 
He looks like a completely different player here. Oh, that's so well done by Ryze, though. Ryze forces Joyo away from the ball with the threat of a back wall demo. Look, Joyo dodged the back wall demo there, but that placed him lower on the wall, so he couldn't actually defend the shot that, Joy that Ryze puts on his net immediately afterwards. Great mix up by Ryze. Multiple threats in the position. Bump or shot. Both probably going to work out quite well. Joyo beats him to the boost. Continues to find success from the kickoff significantly more than he did earlier in the series. Rise with an early challenge. Denies Joyo the first aerial play. Joyo might try and score this. Yeah, he went for it, but Rise was actually there. He decided not to dodge, seeing that the shot was off target. Composure from Joyo. He's not rushing himself here. He's keeping control of the ball so much more than he was earlier on in the series. You know that last reset there might look pointless, but it actually improved his recovery with the wave dash. He was pretty much just hoping that Ryze would commit for no reason on that play. Well, speaking of, Ryze kind of out of position on this one. Joyo drains the long shot. And we have got a series in our hands. Ryze the one who makes the positional mistake. I feel like Joyo is draining Ryze's power. He's draining his intelligence. His 1v1 IQ is being stolen before our very eyes. Because how else can we explain the fact that Joyo is now positioning so smart. He's, <laughs> he's everywhere that he has to be. And Ryze is the one who's making these little mistakes here and there. This is so impressive to see. Totally different player. It's like you said, you know, the preset was holding him back. He changes the preset and now look at him. He's purple. And he's <laughs> He's just scoring on Ryze. Ryze can't get possession anymore. Ryze actually went back to the net here. He got as close as he could to pressure this. Bit of a mistake. Should be able to knock that into the crossbar for sure. But Ryze wanted a very precise touch into the bar. Didn't want to just hit it flat into the bar because then it'll be back in the midfield for Joyo to play with again. Double reset for Joyo. Into the air dribble. Wanted to pinch that off the back wall into the top corner. Looks like even Joyo does have limits as it results in a counter for Rise. I think Joyo in that position was thinking, well, there's one of two things going to happen. Either I score this by just pinching it into the top corner where you kind of squash it in um, from close quarters. And then if that doesn't happen, I'm probably going to get a clearing touch anyway and get the ball into the corner. But he missed the clear. He just knocked it away from himself with his last touch. So he didn't get that wall pinch into the corner. Bit too obvious in that challenge there from Joyo. Rai's able to see him coming from a mile away. Rai's going to be quite comfortable now in this position. He, he had to make some risky plays when he's down by three. He's going to be down by two unless he could do something crazy here. Not going to happen. Joyo's challenges. Really, really a step up from game number one. Staying on the ball not giving Rise space to manipulate him. He's not giving Rise space to get his plays started with momentum. Let's check out Joyo's accuracy. This is absurd. The confidence is absolutely there. He turns to face the play here. <laughs> what on earth? He really did put Rise on zero boost there to turn aggressively like this. But you're witnessing pure mechanical filth as Joyo just takes the ball from literally any position gets a flip reset on it and puts it on target. <laughs> this guy is something else man. He is absolutely ridiculous. Where did this come from? <laughs> Where did this come from? Oh he's even got the bump as well. You know he's got the mechanics yes we already knew that but he's making some smart plays here. We have to give Joyo so much credit for figuring out how to be such an you know, improved ones player it, over the course of a series. Now, Ryze is going to try and get inside his head here. Didn't get a flip, says Joyo. Ryze trying to get inside his head. He's realized that Joyo is, in fact, a threat. <laughs> this is really a threat of a, a reverse sweep in front of him. And he's got to try and get a mental edge. Oh, that's so smart. Ryze fakes the mid boost grab, gets it around Joyo, who was challenging. That's genius from Rise. As soon as 
Raze faked the mid boost grab, Joyo turns to the ball thinking it's an open net, but Raze turns back to the ball, knocks it past him, and now he's only one goal down. He's still on the quick chat spam vibe. Oh, Joyo had to reverse for that boost. He's got a really good position for himself here, though. Immediately lands a reset, and then scoops the ball across the goal and into Raze net once again. You have to think that for Rise, he just doesn't really know what's coming. Is it a high shot? Is it a low shot? You see that he initially moved up onto the wall there expecting a high shot. And then right, uh, Joyo actually just almost rolls it across the goal line. Nice and low. It looks like Rise might have messed up his kickoff, but recovered brilliantly. We have to take another look at this from Rise POV. I'm sorry, Joyo, but what on earth is this? He had Rise flipped the wrong way, missed the boost pad on the way to the kickoff, but he got back to it. And funnily enough, missing the kickoff actually, or missing his approach on the kickoff, actually led to a kickoff goal. Joyo, intelligent play, moves in to pressure the ball, not once, but twice. He's a different man. Game one, Joyo would have gone straight for the boost there. And game four, Joyo, he knows better. And <laughs> he's still got some unbelievable finishing touches. He chips it over Rise on the goal line as well. Completely brain dead, says Rise. I think what Rise is referring to when he says completely brain dead was the rush challenge from Joyo. But, I mean, Joyo just identified that there's really no point running away to get a boost and then defending against Rise. You might as well just go. Or at least you've got to go enough times to keep Rise guessing. And that's what Joyo's been doing here. He is turning it up, not just in offense, but in defense as well. The aggression is popping off and Rai says okay go next he probably doesn't want to watch this goal again Joy has clipped on him several times but yeah we're gonna go next we'll do it again we'll make a ridiculous scoreboard in this game as well because uh it's quite funny when we saw the end of game scoreboard in the last one. Oh, for goodness sake why does it do that what is it doing oh why is it skipping around so much this is really quite... Oh my goodness. Why? Why is it doing that? It's like... It's like when you're trying to put petrol in the car. It's like you're going like this. Up by one, up by one, up by one. The last second it just goes... Oh. Okay. That actually took longer than just going back to the menu. It, <laughs> it genuinely would have been faster going back to the menu. But here we go. Game five. But a game one forfeit from Joyo, where he got completely embarrassed by Ryze, who was showing no mercy to his teammate, who was learning at once in front of our very eyes. But since the game two learning experience and the game three glow up, Ra Joyo looks like a legitimate ones threat now. <laughs> He's figured it all out. He's figured out that you've got to pressure the ball in defense. You've got to just go sometimes. It's better to just go for the ball than back off on every single play. Backing off on this one, but as long as you're not doing it every time, and your opponent doesn't really know what to expect from you. Joyo, absolutely unpredictable as they come right now. Who would have thought this one though? Oh, failed wall dash, but of course. Joyo, fluid recovery as always. You think Rise is tilted? He might be, he might be a little bit tilted because he was all over, he was destroying Joyo and now Joyo's making him look silly. So this game five really does have a lot riding on it. Bragging rights for tomorrow's scrims. Wait, don't... Can I actually just type the match admin? Are you joking? I don't have to use the little arrows? I, <laughs> I feel really stupid. I've never tried. I don't think you can, but I'm, <laughs> I don't think I've ever tried, to be fair. So if you can, I'll, I'll definitely feel like a bit of an idiot, but... <laughs> I'm not going to test it out right now. Hold on. We've got to finish off this. How have I not tried? I don't know. <laughs> this is one of those things that when somebody tells it to you, you're like, yeah, that would have made a lot of sense, to be honest. I love that little last reset that Joe goes for, just to waste some time and have a wave dash to recover with. Oh, he's landed badly on the post there, though. Rise in an extremely good position. Joe trying to grab some small pads, looking at a half flip into recovery, and he gets it. Big mind game win there for Rise, but Joe half flipped into a save and Ryze has missed the boost steal. We saw this in the matchup against Oski. Where occasionally Ryze would just completely miss a boost and it completely changes the game from Ryze being 100 boost against 0 or 12 to now being a midfield play where it's both players on 100 boost. Ryze not messing around. He doesn't want to get caught out by any of these early challenges that Joyo has been throwing at him. 
Making quick moves on the ball, but Joyo's actually committing quite safely to this. I can rise read the back wall. He's up early for it and makes it look easy. 2 1. Big time tackle from Rise. Joyo lacking a good goal side hitbox on that one. What a difference we're seeing from Joyo's kickoffs. The more this series goes on. Awkward little pinch to the near post there from Joyo. Probably not expecting Rise to concede there. He's trying to make life difficult for him. Oh, Rise has really been this one though. I don't think he's going to get back to this. He's given away possession on the wrong side of the ball again. And Joyo scores from a distance. Neck and neck in what has proven to be an extremely tense matchup. Rise. Looking to go one goal ahead. And what a shot to do just that. We saw an attempted goal similar to this from Joyo in the previous game, where he tried to squash the ball in off the top corner like this. Rise makes it happen. He knew Joyo wasn't in a comfortable position with regard to his boost total there. Even if it doesn't go into the goal, Joyo's going to probably land out of position anyway. And Rise scuffs the shot. However, Joyo going to have to play with a boost disadvantage briefly. That's a big deal because he wanted to start an air dribble there. Instead, has to settle for just a simple long shot, which does have a back rise up into the net. That's going to give Joyo a turn to play on this. Actually, Rise scuffing another shot, though. It's Joyo with just a drive challenge right into him. Not worried about the ball as much as the player. And he slots a flick to tie the game. I thought Rise was going to have this covered. Let's have a look at what happened for his POV. Oh, he just left a bit too much of the goal showing there. Joyo perfectly slotted it to the left side off the post. 1.49 remaining. Good kickoff for Joyo. He decides to just play for the low 50 though. If he'd known Rise also had zero boost, he might have gone for something different, but being on zero himself, he didn't want to risk it. Even zero boost to 12 is a big advantage in a dead ball 50. Joyo pinches the ball off the inside of his own post. Rise looking to fake this and take it to the side. No boost to steal just yet. And it didn't spawn underneath Rise either, but that one will. Joyo in a very difficult position. Tried to pop it into his own crossbar. Accidentally pops it into his own net. Well executed by Rise though. Quick shot on the turn, and again, even if Joyo does save that, it's going to be so hard to break free of that hold, the stranglehold that Rise had on him. One boost is getting stolen. The other one is about to, well, one, one boost did get stolen, the other one is about to. Joyo missed the reset. I wonder if Rise realized. Looks like he didn't, but he's going to come away with the possession anyway. Will it be a goal on the possession? Yes, it will. Tight angle shot, but a good one from Rise. He slaps it in. He had one touch to play with, making it a lot easier for himself. Calm under pressure. Rise has almost set himself up for disaster at the end of the last game, saying that he doesn't lose game fives. He's trying to prove that all the case of game five, six, seven ice belong to him and not to Joyo. It's Joyo again, just driving forward, looking for that demo on the challenge. Doesn't want a 50-50 here. He's just trying to take Rise out of the picture. A lot of boost being used here and a defensive flip reset for Joyo as well. But now he's got none left and Rise going to take the ball where not even Joyo can follow. He's looking for the small pads. Double reset from Rise. Oh, he's messed up the wave dash in the landing though. It's going to be open if he got that. We still have a game in our hands. Joyo, not sure what to do with such little time left on the clock. Rise, actually just slow rolling him here. Will that prove to be... Fatal. I don't think it will because he's still got control. He said no to an open net. Wanting to rub it in a little bit more. Oh, Joyo almost had the bump there. If that bump landed, we actually would have been in a one goal game with a kickoff. So good try there by uh, Joyo at the end. But Rise has the ice. He doesn't lose the game five. He did, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. But what a series. Really great games by these guys. Wait until you see the end of series. Oh, we're not going to see the scoreboard, are we? Because they both left. But we are. Look at this scoreboard. <laughs> the scoreboard is two games combined because I uh, I did reset it halfway through. But <laughs> not, not real numbers there uh, for one game for either player. 
It's tied. Yeah, they both got 13 goals. Look at that. 13-13. Amazing.